Are you serious? Are you serious? The beast is going to go roaring by the earth Sunday, June the 8th. Uh, many Christians celebrate as Pentecost Sunday. Now, let me tell you what I mean by the beast is going to roar by the earth. According to the Huffington Post, uh, the earth is in for a close call. Well, not real close, but close enough. There's a massive asteroid nicknamed the beast that is going to set, it's set to fly by the earth on Sunday, June 8th, shortly before 2 a.m. Eastern uh, uh, time at a distance of 716,500 miles from the earth. It's not going to hit us. It's not going to hit us, but it is a big rock. It's one thousand and eighty three feet in diameter so it is a big rock flying at an enormous speed and even though it's going by us at seven hundred and sixteen thousand miles away you might say then there was nothing to worry about there is we didn't know it was coming a rock that big we didn't know it we did not see it until april 23rd and so had it been coming directly toward the earth had it been going to make a direct impact, there would have been nothing we could have done. There would have been no possible way to have diverted it or intercepted it or prevented it from making a catastrophic, catastrophic deep, deep, deep impact upon the earth. But here's what we can tell you. Uh, based on its size and its distance at which it will near the earth, uh, it's also known as 2014 HQ-124, has been classified as a potentially hazardous asteroid. They're, they nicknamed it the Beast. Now, what's disconcerting is that this rocky metallic body this large is coming so very close to the Earth. We should have only... What uh, should have only first been discovered this soon before its nearest approach... Astronomer Bob Berman of the Sleuth Space Camera said in a statement, according to National Geographic, the privately run robotic telescope service will broadcast a preview of the flyby, um, but the HQ-124 is at least 10 times bigger and possibly 20 times bigger than the asteroid that injured a thousand people last year. Okay, so think about that. Remember the, the meteorite, the asteroid that came in, it went right over Siberia, Russia, hit into a frozen lake. The sonic boom of the impact of that meteorite injured over a thousand people and damaged over 1,500 buildings. Now, this rock is 10 to 20 times larger. Now, we didn't even see that one coming that hit Russia. We didn't even know it. It just, boom, it happened. We did spot this one, but not till April 23rd. And it's too late. We do not have, at least we've never been told we have, the um, militarily defense mechanisms that could blow this thing out of the space before it would make an impact on the Earth. If we have such technology, no one has told us yet. Um, and we may uh, try to do some more research to find out what we could do. But for all indications are, we couldn't do anything. And so the, it would be a catastrophic, cataclysmic, not extinction, wouldn't bring extinction to the earth, but certainly would be a Revelation chapter 8 moment. The Bible says it's going to happen. Oh, by the way, it's going to happen that a, that a rock this big is going to hit the earth. It says it right in the Bible. In Revelation chapter 8, it says that it's going to be like a mountain burning, like a lamp. It's going to make an impact into the earth. It's going to kill a third of everything, every living creature in the, in the ocean. Um, it's going to, I mean, seriously, it's going to kill a lot of people. It's going to create a massive tsunami, and it is going to certainly bring catast a catastrophic event to the earth. And this rock, the size it is, could have done that had it hit us. Good news is the beast is going by for now. For now. Now, we also know that the beast is the new world order, the one world government. 
And it's certainly in the process of rising also. Can I make a comparison? Most people can't see that beast coming either. And I can tell you, it's going by the earth a lot closer than this asteroid is. Its approach upon arriving upon the world scene as a one world government is even closer than this asteroid. And most people don't see it coming. And by the time they do, it'll be too late. They will not have any ability to divert it or to stop it. I was just a few moments ago watching President Obama and President Putin, or yes, President Putin and President Obama, Prime Minister Putin is his name now. I just seen them standing there. The President of Russia, Putin, I called him, he was the Prime Minister. He's been President, Prime Minister, he's back President. Putin and Obama, they met briefly at a dinner. They're cold as ice. They, after dinner was over, they shook hands and had a brief exchange. And they're standing right now at the 70th anniversary of D-Day out, out there with other world leaders. And they were standing not far from each other, and they were turned and were looking at each other, just looking at each other. And the, the uh, television, worldwide global television, spotted them and put them up on the, uh, the big screens, and the place just erupted in uh, cheers because the two world leaders at such a difficult time were staring each other down. Um, what does that mean? Was it a, a stare down of aggression or a stare down of respect or an understanding of the moment? And when you talk about how close are we to the one world government, the new world order, we are very close. Let's go back to the asteroid because it's also going to go by. Uh, get this, it's 20 times bigger than that one that hit in uh, Russia last year in February of 2013, NASA NASA recently partnered with Sluice to get more citizen scientists involved in the search for a near-Earth asteroid. They need our help. They need our help. We'd probably be the ones that's most, uh, most uh, meteorites and asteroids that are discovered now are discovered by uh, amateur astronomers, by the way. While larger space rocks are usually spotted from they sail by the Earth. Smaller asteroid and debris have often gone unnoticed. So they will be, um, they're going to be a constant. And now Mike from around the world, when he calls into our live broadcast, we have conversation and he keeps talking about that we are entering into this galactical belt of a high intensity of asteroids and meteorites. And we're not going to be able to avoid them all. He said we're just not going to be able to avoid them all. There is so many of them. And they're, in, it's, they're increasing in number. Eventually, we will have an, a deep impact. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And we know that's true because of what the Bible tells us uh, in the book of Revelation. We know that little pebbles and fire and brimstone is going to come on earth. We know there is going to be a deep impact, like a burning lamp, like the size of a mountain it's described as John saw it in a prophecy. And if this asteroid, the beast, was to hit the earth, if you were to see it coming in its fire and glory, it would be like a burning mountain coming upon the earth in your, in your eyes. And the impact would be unbelievable. So we are getting closer in these end times. I keep telling you, there's wars, there's rumors of wars. Now notice what Jesus said in Luke 21, 25. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And men's hearts failing them to fear after things coming upon the earth. Okay? And he tells us that we need to lift up our heads. We need to look up for our redemption is drawing nigh. It's just am amazing that on June 8th, Pentecost, on Pentecost Sunday, or celebrated by many Christians as Pentecost Sunday, is also the day the Vatican will have Palestinian President Abbas and Israel President Perez in the Vatican together with him praying to one God, which you can't do. And while they're doing that, the beast, an asteroid, will be racing past the earth. It won't hit us. But everything is a sign of the end times. Whatever is going on in the spiritual world, many, many times manifest is in the physical. I'll be right back with more current world events and how they relate to Bible prophecy. I'll also be doing a two-hour show right here from Toronto, Canada, 
uh, starting at 12 noon Eastern at my website, www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. We will cover all these current world events and how they relate to Bible prophecy. And then tonight, special broadcast from the revival I'm preaching here in Toronto, Canada. We'll be broadcasting it live, Lord willing, from Faith Ministries, Faith and Power Ministries here in Toronto, Canada. We'll be broadcasting tonight. That will start at approximately 7.30 p.m. God bless. I'll see you guys a little bit later.